Take me to the to the old times real quick. A hundred years, I mean, how did the business make it to the point it is today? I think being very customer focused and relationship driven, uh, my, my great grandfather, I did not know him, but he was in the Westminster Rotary Club, which I'm still involved with, a lot of other civic organizations, and just having you know, a commitment to the community like a lot of other business owners here like yourself uh, is really how we grow our business and how I think my business has grown over the last 100 years. Hello and welcome to Around Town Carroll County Season 2, Episode 1. Welcome back after our little break. Uh, of course, as you know, this is the show about entrepreneurs doing wonderful things right here in our own county and how you too can build a thriving business and live out your own dream instead of being paid to build someone else's. I'm your host, Adam Stoltz, owner of Digital Consulting LLC, a company focused on video marketing and content creation for your business, making your complex video projects simple. If you like what you see in here today, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and leave a five-star rating. You can also donate to our calls right on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com, and we can't thank you enough in advance for your support. My guest today has been the Maryland Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Next year, he will be the president of Loyola Alumni Association and is currently on the annual fund committee for Westminster. Please help me welcome to the show, President of Crawford Yingling Insurance, Ben Yingling. Ben, thanks for being here. Adam, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to be here. Thank you. And that's uh, the annual fund committee for the Westminster Boys and Girls Club. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that part. Yeah, thank you for correcting me there. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> there's always a flub up somewhere. So That's, that's, a, that's no problem. Yeah, so oh, let me correct that. So currently on the annual fund committee for the Westminster Boys and Girls Club. There we go. Excellent. And well, I'm sure there's a lot more to that list too, right? There's a few. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just stick with those three for now because, Ben, uh, I'm sure if you're in Westminster, you've uh, run into Ben here somewhere along the lines. Um, but, Ben, let's go ahead and start here for those of you that may not be familiar. What is uh, Crawford Yingling? So Crawford Yingling Insurance was established in 1919 by my great-grandfather when he returned from World War I. And we are a full-service independent insurance agency. And one of the things that we are – uh, we took very seriously during the pandemic where it gave us some time to sit back and reflect was we really had to come up with a mission statement and it is truly guiding and protecting all generations and we we came up with that as a team and what it means is we have protected the past you know over the 101 years now we are currently protecting you know our, our clients and want to protect you know everybody here in Carroll County, yeah. but we're also investing in the future. We're a young company uh, with a wonderful, you know, young team, but we are going to have to continually invest in our people to enhance our future client experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's take it back to the hundred years there. I mean, you guys have been in a business for a hundred years and that doesn't happen without changing and adapting to the times. Right. So, um, take me to the, to the old times real quick, a hundred years. I mean, how did the business make it to the point it is today? I think being very customer focused and relationship driven, uh, my my great grandfather, I did not know him, but he was in the Westminster Rotary Club, which I'm still involved with, okay. uh, a lot of other civic organizations, and just having you know a commitment to the community, like a lot of other business owners here, like yourself, uh, is really how we grow our business and how I think my business has grown over the last 100 years. Yeah, great. So 101 now, because I remember, yeah, so I guess it was, was it just last year we came and filmed that for you, the 100 year celebration? I believe it was, or was a it year or two ago. ago. Okay. Yes. Whew, crazy. 100, I mean, there's there's not even, there's some Fortune 500 companies that can't even say they've been around 100 years. So We're very, very fortunate. Yeah, it's very cool, especially in, uh, you know, Westminster here. Uh, very, very neat. So let's talk about the fact that you're an independent insurance agent. What makes that so different from everyone else that's going to go out and shop around with? So independence is a wonderful thing. It means that we represent multiple multiple different insurance carriers. So we can, you know, guide you on what the coverages are. Different carriers, uh, you know, not all insurance carriers are the same. Right. And we can also make sure that 
your pricing is competitive by representing, I believe we represent about 10 different insurance carriers now. So okay. independence is a big thing. Uh, our proactiveness is also a big, but during COVID, we decided that we recognize that our competition, um, you know, nationally and locally are uh, very much reactive. And I was actually having this conversation with somebody yesterday. Um, you know, you call, you get, you know, good service, which is great, but that's a reactive relationship where we, uh, we contact every client every single year via text, email, phone call. And, you know, we want to make sure that we're touching them in a proactive way. So that independence com combined with the proactiveness and our investment in our technology, we, you know, the ease of doing business, uh, you have a lot of choices. I mean, you can't yeah. turn the television on without seeing, you know, the <laughs> Geico's, the Nationwide's, the State Farm's. Yeah. So our investment in the client experience and making it easy to communicate and do business with us is also incredibly important. And that's really how, it, coming back to the mission statement of guiding and protecting all generations, yeah. is the next generation of people, they want that ease of doing business so we have to make it easy to do business with them but at the right. same time we want to create that personal touch right right well and i'm glad you talked too about um you know it's 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 about the client and the relationships because we talked about that a lot in season one with uh greg and nick from atlas premiere sure and they said you know with all this technology coming up the only way to survive is going to be to have those relationships with people that you're not going to get with AI. You're not going to get with a, a computer. So I think it's very smart that you guys have headed in that direction of, look, it, it's all about the, well, I guess you've always been about the relationships, right? I mean, that, and for sure, insurance is pretty much just all relationship based. We, we have, and you know, Greg and Nick are, are great guys and they, yeah. and even in their business, you know, you see, uh, as they said, a lot of AI, you know, a lot of, I mean, and, and so we're both in professional services businesses. Right. And, uh, so we, they have heavy competition as do we so yes the relationship and and coming using the technology but also uh keeping that personal touch is is utmost important and yeah. it's impressive uh you know guys like greg and nick you know are able to compete obviously very well in a very c competitive marketplace well and let's talk about this because i'm sure <laughs> when i talk to a lot of people i know that are, are working in a business with their parents or whatever there can be some butting of heads especially when the generational difference <laughs> how was it trying to get your dad to come along with all the technology and saying i want to bring this new you know when you started to you kind of assert yourself here a little more because now you own the, the business from your dad, correct? Yes. So before he let that go, how did you get your dad to say, hey, come on, we need to invest in some new stuff? You know, I'm very fortunate that my father and I for the last 11 years has had a wonderful working relationship. He was not a hindrance at all. So that's not to say that he didn't challenge my um, ideas and decisions but ultimately you know after the first four to five years he you know he turned those decisions over to me so okay. challenging those decisions was normal uh, but it was my decision so he really had he has empowered me even he empowered me before I even bought the company to take the company to the next level and I am grateful for that because yeah. as you as you mentioned, that is not the case uh, <laughs> yeah, with a lot yeah. of family businesses. And I, I have a lot of, you know, relationships with family businesses. And we have, you know, those next generations of, of business owners. Like we, I have had discussions with those people and, and heard the challenges yeah. um, in, in passing that torch. So I am very grateful to my father that he empowered and has supported everything that we have done here. Awesome. You know, we still have the typewriter up front. It, it, <laughs> I gotta. think it's collecting dust. It, uh, <laughs> I got him away from the typewriter though. So he's, hey. he's good, you know? Yeah, that's all. Well, Thank and again, you know, I, I don't think you make it a hundred years without having that ability though, to work openly with whoever is here, you know, whether that's family or not. So sure. uh, great to hear and great that he supports you. Cause yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not always the case as I've come to find out. Um, let's see here. Let's, um, th this is, this, well, this is going to get us into a lot of stuff here. So let's talk about, you have just, uh, ended your term on the city council of Westminster. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. May so, 10th, I believe was my last day. Okay. So, um, let's start here with that then. Why, why did you want to serve on the council? And, um, you know, what did you get out of the four years of while you were there? So, I am a firm believer in that if you want to see change, you have to do it yourself. So 
I recognized that there were some things about the city. And, and let me say, I mean, the city of Westminster is a great city. I believe yeah. that we have a very bright future. But there were a few things that uh, I was not satisfied with. Uh, and specifically, um, the economic growth strategy of the city of not satisfied with, and I had a constituency that felt the same way. So I uh, talked to some people about it, uh, some of my co- you know close confidence, and and they said, "Why don't you run? We think you'd be good at it." And I'm a firm believer that if you're going to make a change, you need to do it yourself, and you need to take action. And that's why I ran because I believe in the city. I mean, I work here. I have a professional and personal life here. Yeah. Uh, you know, the city can um, can be better, and I believe over the last four years that uh, I left it in a better place. Good, good. So what are some of the things that you accomplished? Now? One thing that you had mentioned here was um, the first water reuse uh, bill, I'm assuming, in the state or, or a program? It's a, well, it's a, it's a program. It's a pilot program. So uh, a little bit of background on the economic uh, dynamics here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the city of Westminster t- over the last 30 years has always had water allocation yeah. challenges and that is a that prohibits a lot of economic growth in in such that if you have a business that is coming to town and they need you know to be certain on a on a basic necessity like water and sewer and you're telling them that there's it's uncertain if they're going to be able to get that you know, basic infrastructure, Right. it's not, you don't really jump to the top of the list of places where companies want to go. Yeah, it makes so, sense. So that was a huge challenge. And uh, what myself and Mayor Joe Dominic, who owns Gage Digital Media, yeah. were able to do is uh, the Governor Hogan was on a visit here to Kenora Break. I had a relationship with the pre- former president of Corner Break, Rich Bowie, who I credit him for helping us with this program. Uh, Kenora was having some trouble expanding, and it was related to water. So when the governor came, uh, I had, you know, as the governor's walking in the door, talked to the president of Kenora and said, hey, why don't you talk about water reuse, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he did, you know, and so he kind of put me on the spot. We're t- touring Kenora, and the governor turned and said, so, Ben, you got a plan, huh? And I said, yeah, we really need to pilot this water reuse program here in Westminster because if we don't, we are never going to be able to have the allocable water to grow economically. And as yeah. probably all these people listening know that Governor Hogan was big on economic growth and bringing businesses to Maryland. Yeah. So uh, Mayor Dominic and I met with the, the governor's staff, met with Maryland Department of the Environment, Ben Grumbles, who is Secretary of the Environment. And in fact, now I believe that pilot program is going to be starting within the next couple months. So the next awesome. council will be overseeing that. Cool. And that is a, you know, we used on the council a term called cathedral thinking. You know, the cathedrals in uh, Europe were built where they were designed by people who never would actually see, you know, the the finished product. Right. So that's kind of how we look at the water reuse program is this is something that's going to pay dividends for the next hundred years and set up the city to have that sustainable basic resource to help businesses uh, create that certainty of, to come here. And so what's the what's the general idea behind the water reuse? How does that all work? <laughs> that's a great technical question, yeah. so I'm not going to try to answer <laughs> it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's utilizing technology to pretty much speed up the natural process that water goes through. So water falls in the sky, it goes to the rev- reservoir, you know, it goes down the stream, natural processes happen, it's sucked back into our filtration system like right. the water plant and gets treated and, you know, comes out in your faucet. Uh, it just speeds that up using okay. technology. I'll, I'll just not yeah. going into the techno. <laughs> Talk to Jeff Glass in the city of Westminster. He can explain all about it. Gotcha. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. But um, no, okay. So uh, good. So it was just technology to get it get it back and, and usable again faster. Usable again faster and, good. you know, create capacity for, you know, for example, uh, one of the struggles we have here is attracting biotechnology because mm. we, we don't have the type of water to be able to support that. Gotcha. So hopefully, you know, once we have that, we can start to I guess, diversify our economic development strategy. Yeah. Well, even more so, because, again, we've covered this on past shows. You know, most people say, ah, Carroll County, farming community. There's some crazy businesses here doing some wild stuff. And I'm sure you've (laughs) bumped into quite a few of them. Sure. Um, I guess talk about that. I mean, you obviously, we've said, want to expand into biotech. But, I mean, how great is it that 
little Carroll County and, and even Westminster has some of these very diversified and crazy tech companies. I mean, sure. Across the board. Um, I actually give, I know you all know him very well um, at local homestead products, Victoria Trevor. and yeah. Trevor. Uh, what he has done, I think, in terms of agritourism is yeah. a huge opportunity for the county. Uh, I mean, he is a destination and he's just, yeah. I mean, it's exploded. I've watched him on social media, but yeah. uh, Old Westminster Winery, you know, Drew Baker, yep. Pub Dog, you know, yeah. uh, Flood Zone, you know, yeah. I mean, that's ag tourism. Yeah. You know, so I, I would love to see that, you know, uh, more of a focus on that in the community. And I think that we are, you yeah. know, and that kind of pivots into, you know, what can we do to enhance our downtown here in Westminster? And I know you're going to ask me that we about the Stocksdale project. Oh, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'll talk about that when you get there. Yeah. Well, no, talking about, I, I mean, even my shirt today, uh, Fiddler's Green in Tawny Town, um, sure. like you said, local homestead. Uh, we talked with all of them, actually, local homes that we're going to try to get on this season. Um, but we talked with Fiddler's Green that, you know, a lot of people want locally grown food and locally grown mm -hmm. sourced things. And so to to see that happening again, I, I, to your point, I think is only going to help Carroll County because it's places for people to go, buy stuff. It's it's amazing. So Yeah, I mean, I love Flood Zone. I go into their little market. They have such a great selection yeah. of meats and cheeses, yeah. and that's the type of place that we need. I mean, even Bernie down at Genie Birds right now, uh, if you if you haven't been in there, so he has uh, got a really nice wine, wine wall in there. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was talking to him the other day, and – you know, he, he came from the wine business before he took over the bakery, and he's sourcing these wines from places that you, you're you not going to find in your typical liquor store. So I think yeah. one, I can't remember the grape, but, you know, it was from Italy, and he goes, look, you're only going to find this, you know, there's only eight producers of this type of wine from this grape in Italy, and he knows about it because that's his background. Well, next thing you know, I'm sitting there talking to him, and I walk out with $80, or $80 worth of wine. Right. But good so, wine, I'm sure. But good if wine. That, yeah, that local small and that batch. boutique spot, you know, is is exactly what downtown and Carroll County needs. And you're seeing that. And yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, well, yeah, you see cool little businesses popping up everywhere. And well, let's just stick on Carroll County for now, okay. because a lot of all other guests have said, I mean, the reason they're here is because of the, the business community. Super supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody. But um, more so just the people in the community in general. I mean, businesses don't exist without the community members spending money at those businesses. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, talk to me about Carroll County. Obviously, you've been here for 100 years. There's a reason you guys stayed, right? Yeah, you know, I, I grew up here, uh, you know, went away down to Baltimore for high school, you know, to Loyola Blakefield. Um, you, know, uh, you know, we have brick and mortar here. We have name recognition, so – you know, that's definitely, I mean, why would I pick up and leave somewhere that I have a great brand and we're expanding that brand? Well, not only that, you've, you've had some customers now, what, I think your dad said over 65 years now? Yeah, yeah. And we really want, you know, we want those, uh, you know, I talk about guiding and protecting all generations and that next generation of customer, you know, that 30-year-old to 40-year-old young professional like you and Kelly. Oh, yeah. I mean, we want to retain you for, you know, the next 20, 30 years. I mean, that's a big, that's a big deal to us. Uh, you know, look, I bought a house right on Green and Anchor Street behind the Arts Council. You know, we, my wife Amy and I saw it on a Sunday, toured it on Tuesday, ratified on Thursday. You know, it, it was very quick. And yeah. it's the community, uh, you know, the, you know, not the hustle and bustle of the city, but close enough. Yeah. I mean, we have a great county. We, we have a great city. It has a lot of opportunity and we yeah. can – be better. So I look forward to, and I know most of the business owners on this podcast, I'm sure look forward to being involved in taking the community to the next level. Oh yeah. I would agree completely. And, uh, yeah, that's, well, that's a big reason for this show is, uh, again, I've, I've already heard from several people that I've watched is like, well, I, I've always known that person, but I didn't know that about them until they watched the show. So sure. we were also trying to get some of that out there too. So, all right, but you would, you had brought it up. Let's get back to that. The Stocksdale Garage uh, property here in Westminster, which the, the city just purchased, correct? That's correct. W what have some ideas been floated out there for to make that property into? Well, first, I can't thank Jim and Jane Stocksdale enough. You know, Stocksdale is a big Carroll County name, yeah. and um, I grew up with their grandkids, so they lived right down the street from me. So I was just – I was so honored to be able to lead the – the purchase of that property yeah. and I thank them because it is the key property in the city and 
you know, a lot of uh, what I talked about and the current council talks about is the revitalization of yeah. the downtown. And you do that property right, and that will be the epicenter, the centerpiece of downtown. So uh, to your, your question about what is the vision for it. So in my four years on council, we had heard a lot from surrounding organizations, specifically larger corporate and McDaniel College, that – we need a good, solid boutique hotel in downtown Westminster. So I thought about it and I said, okay, well, that's a great idea, but how do we prove that that's what we need? Right. So we engaged a consultant. I believe they're out of uh, Washington, D.C. We interviewed a couple and they are, um, they have worked in Charlotte and then all around D.C. in these re- revitalization type of projects and uh, they did a feasibility study which you can find I believe on the city's webpage I think we did the meeting the pres- the presentation in April of this this past uh, um, excuse me April 2021 and they looked at a couple different options because we guided them and said look we want a boutique hotel but ultimately with redevelopment it needs to be financially feasible for the yeah. investor or developer I think a lot of people I mean I say that because I'm a business person. Like I get that, but some people say, "Well, we, you, you know, we should have this or we should have that." Yeah. That's not the way it works, right? You know. So we did the study, and luckily they looked at um, they looked at some upscale condominiums. They looked at office uh, mixed use, uh, but ultimately the office is oversaturated. Uh, yeah. Condominiums don't, at least right now, aren't selling for enough that it would warrant an investment in tearing down on that property and building condominiums. It's just the the return isn't there. Right. Um, so they said, but wait, you know, we looked at a boutique, they looked at a boutique hotel and ultimately the study came back and said, you know, you know, you have, here's your competition, you know, you got your top notch hotels down in Harbor East. You've got kind of your middle grade and, you know, around like Best Western Days in and then in Owens Mills. But for a boutique, you know, 70 to 110 rooms, price point 140 to $170 a night, a higher end fixtures, maybe a, you know, retail component in the first floor. Yeah. That's feasible based on market conditions that they looked at. So, the, the next steps of that, which the new council will take care of and oversee, uh, is you need to then put together an RFP and you yeah. need to figure out, okay, what is it going to look like? Is the city going to be involved in it? How is it? Are they going to be, you know, right. there's a million different ways you can do that commercial development, uh, but the demand is there. You know, I, I would think so with McDaniel right up the road. I mean, so you got th- parents flying in, trying to get their kids to school. Or- I, I was with... So not only McDaniel, right, uh, when I was talking to, I think it was Josh Ambrose at one point was telling me, I don't remember the number, but the amount of families and visitors that come to the college, it's 24-7. I believe. People oh, I believe. are coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, the college has a robust conference, obviously not last year for COVID, but the college has a robust conference services division all through the, 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 um, the summertime. Yeah. Uh, so you've got McDaniel, then you've got the corporate, but then you've got Gettysburg. Gettysburg is 20, 30 minutes away. I think one of the most yeah. visited destinations internationally. Yeah. So you get that overflow from there. I mean, I think our, your friends up in Tonytown, George's on York, yeah, yeah. have done just incredibly well. Uh, Getting you know, the Gettysburg traffic. Yeah. Gettysburg traffic, you know. And then somebody was telling me that there are 20 some wedding destinations uh, in Carroll County. I believe it. Farms, et cetera. So you're looking at farms, you're looking at the downtown Westminster festivals, yeah. wine festivals. Those are the. Those are the events between the events, weddings, you know, corporate sure. visitors, yeah. McDaniel College, where that will feed that downtown boutique well, hotel. And right there where that property is, I mean, you have a Lordens, Johansson's, exactly. Raphael's, you've got Genie Birds, you've got exactly. Rock Salt. I mean, yeah, it makes total sense to put it right there. Exactly. Uh, well, you not have, to mention the airport, too. You got people flying in. Just you got the airport, yeah. you know, flying in. I mean, if we had a boutique hotel in downtown right now, you know, the BMW Championship is coming to Caves Valley, which is. 30 minutes away, I would be very surprised if there wasn't a lot of corporate air traffic coming yeah. to that Carroll County Airport for yeah. that event because instead of going down to BWI and coming up through the city of the Beltway, you can sneak in the back door here at yeah. wonderful Carroll County. Yeah. You know, if we had that hotel, we would be able to have you know people staying here for that event. It's it's events like that that are going to feed that hotel. And I, 
I know that the city council is committed to that, and I look forward to watching them oversee that project. Yeah, let's hope something uh, cool comes through. I mean, again, I know a lot of people are, are hesitant to embrace change, but it's it's life. You know, things change, things move on, and um, to see Main Street change in Westminster, I think would be great because it's been pretty stagnant and the same for quite a while. And not that, not to say that I want to take away all the charm and the smallness of it all, but to see healthy businesses back in some of the locations, to see people maybe walking Main Street more than just parking and going in somewhere, um, I, you know, all for, all for complete. Well, that's why, again, I think some of the wine strolls and stuff that, sure. that put on, are, that's why they're so big. Absolutely. And you know, those wine strolls, it's, it's, you know, going back to the boutique hotel, I, I would venture to say that that hotel would be full, you um, know, especially being right down there. You know, those people then, they're going to stay overnight. They're going to go out to Lordens and go out to, uh, you know, Artisan Wine Company. And then yeah. they're going to go to Genie Bird the next day for breakfast or go to Johansson's for breakfast. You know, maybe stop by Cultivated, you know, pick something up. Yeah. So it creates just that synergy and epicenter for downtown like you're talking about. Well, and you get you can walk everywhere from that hotel because right now the exactly. hotels are outside of the downtown limits. So you're driving. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're try, trying to have a good night and be responsible, you know, sure. Being able to walk back to your uh, to your lodgings would definitely be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> this may see, seem funny to some, but I like how you brought it back, though. So you golf a lot. Um, and, and it's obviously that you love it, but there's, there's a real business season, reason behind it, right? Sure. Absolutely. So, so, so uh, talk to us about golf and, and how you use it as a business tool. Sure. So my grandfather, who was the second generation was a avid golfer. He was a very good golfer, much better than I am. Uh, he's had a couple hole in ones and he was a golfer at Wakefield Valley. And, you know, I never got to play with him cause I, got into the game late i think i was about 19 or 20 and he had passed away by then but he developed a ton of relationships by playing golf with people because you think about it where you go to a lunch or you have an appointment here in a conference room yeah or you know you see somebody at an event you have an hour max with them i mean an hour to lunch maybe five ten minutes in a crowded room here in a conference room, you have an hour maybe. On a golf course, you have four hours. Easier to get through the small talk. Exactly. Get into the real. Exactly. Real you have right? four hours. And it's not just about, you know, doing business. In my exe- – well, it, it is and it isn't. It's about building a relationship with somebody. So, yeah. you know, normally my golf rounds, I golf almost every Friday afternoon, but it's reserved for clients, you know, referral partners, and prospects that – people who I want to get to know better and you really get to know somebody on the golf course from you know A to Z you get to know about their family about their their history you know what they like you know and then you have a common interest uh being golf so it's it's been a great tool and uh, you know it's funny a lot of the times the business is done very very quickly on the course you know I'll be standing on hole seven and you know oh so you're in the insurance business. Yeah, we own a business and you know, we want you to look at our stuff because you know, yada yada yada, whatever right. reason they give. And it's like, "Yep, okay, sounds good. Follow up with you on Monday." And that's how it's done. Right. And then you go back to playing golf and having some cocktails and building a personal relationship with right. them. Right. Well, we're going to get back to relationships real quick, though. I do have to thank my sponsor, new sponsor for season two, who I know you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Uh, to all those of you watching, though, the new sponsor is target and community educational services and target is a client of mine and i've been a fan of theirs for many years and we can't thank them enough for their support and more importantly their belief in us and what we're trying to accomplish here uh for those of you that don't know target community and educational services is a wonderful nonprofit in carroll county striving to enhance the lives of people with disabilities Uh, through their human services graduate program at mcdaniel college you too can have a life-changing experience of working with these amazing people while getting your master's You can find out more about their graduate program at mcdaniel.edu or at Target's website at targetcommunity.org. And while you're there, think about donating directly to Target Community and help to enhance the lives of people with disabilities. So I know you're familiar with Target and just an awesome organization. Um, They they really are a fantastic organization. Target, ARC, you know, Change slash Penmar. uh, You know, the support for developmental disabilities is 
is amazing around here and and i can relate directly to that because i have a cousin who i'm very close with who's a 40 year old that has a developmental disability and he lives out of state and the state that he lives in does not have services like this and yeah. we're, we're trying to get him to come up here and start that process um but it really hits home with me because it's such a invaluable yeah. service and it really helps people because i see it i see it from my cousin that yeah. he he greatly needs something like that yeah. so uh, kudos to target and uh all those other organizations yeah yeah well and even back to your mcdaniel they even uh the, the mcdaniel program there i'll just i'll read this off real quick mm -hmm. the, the human services management program there if you go there it's a 30 credit program where they give you an 80 percent tuition scholarship an annual stipend of $26,000, and while you're in the program, you get free room and board. So if you're trying to get a master's in human services management, that's definitely the one you want to look into. <laughs> so, um, But let's jump back to relationships here because I, I think this is big for anyone trying to run a business or start a business. Because uh, I know when I started, you saw me start popping up with Kelly at, at networking events. Um, I, I would get frustrated because I would meet someone and be like, oh, well, they're obviously going to email me or talk to me. And it took Kelly, uh, you know, a couple times of reminding me, look, and as you've just mentioned, until you have a relationship and that person can actually trust you and look at you as a fellow, you know, business member or friend, uh, you're not going to get that call or, hey, you know, right? So, um, again, why, why is relationship building so important to running a, you know, a very successful business? I think because people do business with people who they like mm -hmm. and have common common interests yeah. so I, that's that's pretty pretty much how i look at the relationship is you know if you people like you they trust you you have a common interest that's how you build the relationship and and you know they'll do business with you i mean relationships yeah. are formed at so many different levels yeah. you know you can have a relationship and i'll bring it back to golf for example you know i just uh played the number five golf course in the world, Oakmont, Oakmont Country Club. And, cool. you know, I got introduced to the member through a friend of mine, and we spent two days together. And that's a relationship now that hopefully we'll be able to cultivate. And for me, that relationship is about hosting him down here playing golf and him hosting me again. Yeah. Uh, you know, probably not going to end up doing any business with him, but that's still a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Somebody you know? else, yeah. You can and then you have him. the relationship that's the business relationship. You have the relationship that is, hey, would you mind putting in a good word for this potential client, even though you don't do business with me because you like me and you know I'm a trustworthy guy? Yeah. That's a relationship too. Yeah. Relationship isn't all about just exchanging goods and services. There's so much more to it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm glad you brought that up because, yeah, I mean, so – you know, uh, someone doesn't want to use you for your services. It doesn't, but they end up being a great person. As you just mentioned, you don't know what someone else can get you involved in and you don't know who someone else knows or more importantly, what someone else knows. Right. Cause I hearing that different point of view or hearing someone think of your problem from a different angle. I, I, how has that helped you? You know, cause I'm sure while you're out on the golf course, somebody's like, you know what, Ben, I hear what you're saying, but you should probably look at this direction. Right. I'm, I'll tell you, there's a guy around here, a couple guys actually, um, Ross Albers from Albers and Associates, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drew Baker from Old Westminster Winery, um, Justin Gilligan from Therafit Enterprises. Yep. They're uh, wonderful, wonderful individuals. We had a little masterminds group, uh, you know, going on for a while, and we all kind of got busy and kind of fizzled out. But, yep. but what I will say is, you know, th those individuals, you talk about getting, it, it, I call it intellectual capital. You know, yeah. getting the intellectual capital from your peers is huge. And I mean, Ross is a, a great example. I mean, every time I talk to him, I mean, I'm always pulling away some nuggets from him. Yeah. You know, uh, same thing with the Maryland Chamber of Commerce. I'm, I'm stepping off their board, but, you know, Maryland Chamber has, you know, big executives, you know, president of BG&E, you know, bank executives, hospital executives, you know. These probably aren't people that we're really going to be doing business with, but drawing from that intellectual oh, capital yeah. and then scaling it and applying it to my company is well worth time spent, and it's been invaluable. So yeah. to your point, yeah, drawing from other people and their knowledge is paramount importance to any business person's success. Uh, I couldn't say it any better. I, I fully agree. I, I you know. 
Because again, I, I tried to, when I first started, it's like, I'm going to do this all myself. I can do it. I can do it all myself. <laughs> and you just, you eventually find out, no, you can't. And really, it, it, I, it back to the old cliche, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Sure. It, it's it's so true. It, it, you could be, you know, from, from my standpoint, you could be the best videographer in the world, best editor, best mission designer. If you don't know the right people that want to work with you, all that's for nothing. So, um, let's see. We talked about your council, the boutique here. Um Let's talk about, um, you know, what kind of businesses would, would call uh, Crawford Yingling Insurance or even maybe not just what families. So what, what's the broad range that you offer here? What can you cover for people that give you a call? <laughs> I'd like to say anything, but we niche, uh, you know, we niche very well on uh, personal line clients. We really target the young professional, that 30 to 45-year-old. Now, that's not saying that we don't you know, help people who are uh, in the 50 to 70s, you know, older, but our really our focus is that young professional who a lot of the times are with one of the national brands, you know, that you yeah. see on television all the time, but they're acquiring assets, they might have a family, they're starting to, you know, maybe buy rental properties, and they just want a little bit more guidance, I always come back to mission statement guidance on how do they protect their future? Yeah. You know? um, so those are great you know, referrals. In fact, we do a lot of uh, geo-targeted advertising to that, you know, consumer. And then, you know, your businesses, uh, you know, smaller businesses, we usually kind of play around in the 15 million in revenue and under type of business. So your contractor with 10 or 15 trucks, you know, your technology, we're big in technology companies. So your small technology companies that are doing, you know, 15 million in revenue and under, you know, um, all the way down to the help, little guys like help, me. Help desk, you know, all of, all of that stuff. So, yeah. uh, again, we're independent. So we have about 10 different carriers. So we have a robust offering to cover all of our clients' needs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you when I came to you, I mean, I told everyone what I appreciated was is when you called me, it was, look, this is what you're looking at. This is what it means. This is why they're charging. You know, and that way I was actually able to make an informed decision. Okay, well, I don't need that. I just need that first part. Let's roll with that. You had me a, a you know, a, a proposal. Well, what am I looking for? Not a proposal, but you had sure. me a, a plan here. Yeah, you had you had it ready to go in a day or two because um, I told you I need it quick to get a job, and uh, it was handled quickly. So um, yeah, absolutely awesome. And it makes sense to have that niche because there are plenty of people. And again, the point behind this show, I think there's a lot of people that have realized it's better to work for yourself. It's time to start a business instead of trying to go out and work that nine to five. Um, which again, I think is why you're seeing the little uh, farm air, farm ads pop up. All the you know, like the Trevor and Victorias of the world, as well as the Westminster wineries of the world. Um, so yeah, really, really good. Um, hmm, what else can we talk about here? Anything else you want to bring up? Yeah. So I want to talk about our relationship with McDaniel College. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Absolutely. So the uh, former president who just left, uh, I think of a week or so ago, President Roger Casey, when he first came to McDaniel, he uh, one of the things he wanted to do, well, he created the McDaniel commitment, you know, okay. and part of the McDaniel commitment was to ensure that uh, students had real life work experience when they graduated. Yeah. So uh, Josh Ambrose, Dan Schaefer, um, uh, Professor Gavin, and a few others have really done a, a great job of funneling interns to our organization. And I believe we've had about eight of them over the last four or five years. Okay. And right now, actually, one of uh, those interns is our marketing director. And we have you know, seen our interns like go on to be incredibly successful in different fields. So I'll use one of them. Her name's Sabrina Donick. I think she was our first one, but she's a project manager for some huge Swedish uh, conglomerate, like Swedish construction conglomerate. Right. Nice. And she got in because she had insurance experience and she had uh, compliance. And she so there was in the, excuse me, she was in her, their insurance compliance department. That's how she got in to this yeah. company. And, uh, now she's running, like, I think she's building a school in Baltimore City, and it's a huge project, like $25 million project. So, uh, you know, the relationship with McDaniel has been fantastic. And when yeah. Roger Casey created the McDaniel commitment, we took full advantage. I mean, we hopped right in, and, you know, we actually have another um, a marketing intern named Evan Fletcher. He's going to be a senior, so he's doing putting in about 20 hours a week for us uh, 
uh, for the summer. Nice. And helping us with some of our messaging in our digital digital space. Nice. Well, and speaking of your digital space, I I, I want to bring this to other people's attentions because you I, I love the fact that you were out doing your own show, doing your own little videos, doing your own content. I I, I try to you know tell people, look, even if you're not doing the level of stuff I'm doing with the crazy toys and all this, be doing what you're. I mean, I I can't tell people enough like what you're doing is awesome the fact that you're putting yourself out there making your videos making your content um and getting your interns to help you with all this i mean man more people should follow suit and can you can you talk about how your content creations help grow your business well so to your point if you're a small business that's not putting out content um you're behind yeah you know uh, i i actually i look at um I keep coming back to like local homestead, man. Their content's great. Yeah, they, yeah. they do a heck of a job. I mean, they're it's impressive. Yeah. you know, and you see it with their social media following. Uh, yeah, it has helped my business. So we're in the middle right now of doing these little minute clips that are called claims and coverage. You know, and because in our business, you know, right now it's so commoditized that you see, you know, that lizard on the television, and they're saying, <laughs> oh, you know. Just buy this 15% or more. It's so cheap, you know, and then people find out, well, it really doesn't cover everything because just so you know, insurance does not cover everything. It right. doesn't. So, you know, we said, what can we do to provide some education and value to people? And we do this claims and coverage where we give real life claim scenarios. The next one's coming out is like I destroy somebody's garden with a lawnmower or something, you know, where's right. that covered? Uh, we try to add some humor to it. Uh, and it has been good. Like our YouTube, you know, we're trying to grow our YouTube following. That's easier said than done in, yeah. the, in the insurance space, uh, you know, but we have to stand out as independent agents because there's a ton of competition. And, uh, you know, if we're going to compete with the national brands, you know, we're going to have to create something that they're not doing. Yeah. And if we're going to compete with our local, you know, our local competition, we have to do what they're not doing. So we have seen, um, I, I actually, I find people coming up to me or messaging me and saying a, a buddy of mine from McDaniel who lives in New York, uh, we were talking about golf. He messaged me about golf, you know, and he said, just so you know, I love your videos. Yeah. You know, uh, I think recently we got a customer because somebody commented on one of them through LinkedIn Funny how that works. And I it? followed up with them and said, if I can ever help you know, let me know. And it turned into a customer. So yep. the content is, uh, is, is great. I have to thank my marketing director, Justin Chapin, McDaniel graduate, uh, who is, is really hit the ground running, doing a great job with that. Yeah. Well, two things about that. Cause I, I want to get back to the McDaniel thing. Cause I'm assuming mm -hmm. having young set of eyes and young, fresh ideas coming in regularly has helped, it but, has. but let's talk about, cause I think you nailed it. The educational content. I, I try to tell clients this all the time. If you put your knowledge out there for your viewer to view, what what you're doing is two things. A, you're giving them something of value that they can learn from. But B, you are making yourself a warm call at that point. Yep. Right? They've now seen your face. They know how you talk. They know what you do. It's an easier time to make, pick up that phone and make the call to you now than it is just being like, who's Ben Yingling and why should I call him, right? So – Again, if you're out there to running your own business, learn how to use a camera, a little bit of free editing software, anything you can get your hands on, and just start producing educational content for your for your potential clients that you know will add value to their day, and adding value to existing clients, yeah, as well, yeah, you know, sure. strengthening that client relationship because as most businesses know, it is much more expensive to uh, attract a, a and and sign a new client than it is to retain. Yep, always retain. Yep. Very true. So uh, real quick, back to McDaniel, though. Sure. How great is it to constantly have, because as you said, your dad lets you kind of, you know, hey, bring in the new stuff. So I, I'm assuming you're passing that on to the next generation. How cool is it to have young, fresh ideas and eyes on all new projects as they come in from McDaniel? It's, it is so great. I mean, the McDaniel students have just brought so much of this company. I mean, uh, you know, something small, you know, that doesn't seem like a big deal. It almost gave my dad a heart attack. You know, <laughs> we bought a ping pong table for the office. Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, one of my McDaniel interns says, man, we need to get a ping pong table. I was like, why? He goes, because we're sitting in an office, you know, for an hour and a half or, you know, in a meeting and we're just burnt out. We're trying to figure out, you know, X, Y, and Z. You need some time to decompress and just be you. So we got this ping pong table, you know, and we'll play a couple games of ping pong, you know, here and there, decompress, and then get back to it. So yeah. that kind of stuff is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, change up the day. Well, and I mean, change it up. Yeah. 
You know, it's a like whole Google thing. Now, you have, know? have you guys have you guys embraced uh, any remote work yet? Or you, we have. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my longtime uh, team member Jennifer Trimble, uh, we made her remote during COVID because we had to. We wanted to split yeah. the office. And she just hit the ground running. I mean, she's yeah. in Frederick, so we cut a commute, you know, an hour and a half commute to nothing. And we're so we're so well well set up technologically that it's almost as if she's here. I mean, we have Zooms with her a couple times a week, yeah. but you know, she's happy. We're happy. Um, she's productive. You know, we she's got, I think she's coming into the office tomorrow. You know, we're doing a little team event. But yeah, so remote work is 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 huge. And I know that, gosh, you know, just the world is found that out they were yeah. forced to yeah. just like we were we yeah. were forced to do that and it turns out to be wonderful yeah well i i actually um uh, met up with an old uh business i used to work for the other day and i told him i said go figure as soon as i start my business because i got sick of going into a nine to five you all go work from home and and you know i probably would have worked out better there had it been a work from home thing at the time but yeah i think the next generation is looking for that yeah you you're not going to get anyone from the next generation that says, yeah, let me work 40 hours a week straight, nine to five every day. I mean, some companies are going to have to, but, sure. um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think times are changing and, and the internet and the gigabyte internet that we have in Westminster, all that stuff. I mean, it just allows you to work from anywhere and do anything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, did you have, uh, out of curiosity, did you have anything, uh, to do with the autonomous vehicle corridor? I didn't, uh, it's an interesting project. Yeah. I did go to the ribbon cutting, but no, that was not my project. That was definitely Graham Dodge, the oh, executive magic. director of magic. Uh, yeah. that was his brainchild. And I love though, that he put the renderings of, you know, Westminster hotel on the side of that stock sale property, yeah. you know, with like the autonomous vehicle being docked there. I don't know if the developer work for the developer, but it's certainly an ambitious project i look forward to following that would be it. cool to be able to hop in an autonomous vehicle have you take you wherever we need to go in the city yeah definitely be very cool it's very ambitious yeah well hey you know what I, things don't you know you got to dream big right I mean, that's part of the reason i started this show so i my mentor said to me you know what adam whatever you think of dream bigger so sure if, absolutely if you're not dreaming big what are we doing here so um well we're running up on an hour here but um yep. before we go where can everybody find you and your business so we're located in downtown Westminster, right across from Rock Salt Grill. So come in, play a game of ping pong, hang out. Yeah. You know, we're going to be getting some new furniture, kind of have a more laid back feel here. Um, we're also um, on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We have, subscribe, you know, to our YouTube page. Check yeah. out our YouTube videos that are posted on social media. Comment on them, like them. You know, some of them are funny. Some of them are serious. So we're all over social media, website, you know, CrawfordYingling.com. So we, we'd love to have uh, anybody reach out to us. And as I said, if you're in downtown, man, stop in, play some ping pong, hang out. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, um, Ben, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate having you on the show. It was great talking to you and uh, hearing all your feedback on everything in the city. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Well, I, actually, you know what? You're right. Thank you, Kelly, for waving at me. Over in the corner. I forgot to mention real quick. We did thank our sponsor, uh, Target Community Educational Services. However, a quick shout out to Fiddler's Green Farm, who is on the shirt here. Um, they are, I believe, episode seven or eight of season one, which uh, isn't out yet, but will be. Um, but a quick comment about the shirt. It's 100% natural cotton, no synthetic fibers whatsoever. And they even went out of their way to source a printer that would use natural biodegradable ink. So very the cool. shirt can all degrade. Yeah, very, very cool. They're very um, environmentally conscious over there, Fiddler's Green. But uh, check them out. They do a whole bunch of CBD products, and uh, I think they're eventually going to get into some whiskey. So keep an eye out on them. But, awesome. Um, yeah, so Ben, thanks a lot. Uh, really appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll be sure to catch up with you again. Uh, Absolutely. It's new. always a pleasure, Adam. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. And for those of you um, watching and listening today, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, leave a five-star rating. And don't forget, you can also donate to our home, uh, donate to our calls right on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com. We can't thank you enough in advance for your support. Take care, be good to one another, and we'll see you on the next episode.